And good morning from Television Centre Bracknell, Berkshire. This is United Kingdom Talk on the 21st of June 2017. Yes, gang, it's a Wednesday. Are you ready for the massive heat rush? Oh, my God, it's going to be... Isn't it going to be the hottest day now for, like, 30 years or something like that? Is it 1976? 86, 96, 06. 17, 31 years. I do believe today is going to be the hottest day here in the United Kingdom for 31 years. What a good job I have now installed my new air conditioning, which I think you'll be able to see on camera too, boys and girls. There it, oh no, you can't. Well, it's up there. Hang on a minute. I'll move it a bit. Look, there you go. It's up there. Can you see it? There it is. It's up there already. Yes, thank you very much. Very, very nice and comfortable it is now, boys and girls. Oh, yeah, I'm very, very pleased with that. So yesterday I got up about um, half past eight in the morning. Oh, hang on a minute. No, the weather. The weather first. So I turned on BBC Breakfast. Oh, sorry I wasn't with you last night. We were going to do a late night show. There'd probably be another another complaint this morning from Wendy. Because she likes to watch the um, light night, late night show at her convenience, but like first thing in the morning, you see. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it last night. I had a bit of a headache. I think it was out in the sun a little bit too much yesterday, which was unintentional. That or the heat, or, or a bit of both. So we didn't do a late night show last night. I had a headache. But here I am this morning. Uh, yes, in the soup. This morning's Super Saw Away Daily Mirror. So you see, I'm trying to be politically central on the show, in the middle somewhere, so as not to favour one, the wonderful Theresa May... The gorgeous shoe-wearing Theresa May or the untidy old bloke, <laughs> nearly swore, and the untidy old bloke, Mr. Jeremy Corbyn. I don't want to see, be seen to be favouring the beautiful Theresa May, who can do no wrong in my eyes, or the Coalition of Chaos man, Jeremy Corbyn. I don't want to favour them. I'm reading articles from all papers, including this very, very important Article in the Daily Mirror this morning, UK heatwave, Britain one step from a national emergency. As sweltering temperatures could top 35 degrees today. 35 degrees. Where are you, dear? What is that, 35 degrees? That's about 100, isn't it? Oh, hang on a minute. I have my thermometer in here. One moment. 35, just a minute now. 35, so it's got 35, that's about... 96 on my thermometer. Thermometer. Yes. About 96, something like that. <coughs> it says uh, temperatures already reached 20 degrees before 7 a.m. in the southwest. And at Royal Ascot, which is going on at the moment here, uh, just down the road from me, actually, in Ascot, uh, is Berkshire race organisers said they were considering relaxing the strict dress codes for first time. Have you ever been to Royal Ascot? You ever done that? You'd think it would be full of, like, really well-behaved, posh people, wouldn't you? Ah, couldn't be further from the truth. Honestly, the trash that they let there now. Ghastly people. Awful people. And half of them stay in a bloody hotel up the road from me. The Hilton Hotel. Is that, no, it's not Hilton. is isn't five-star. Not the, not the chain. They can't be five. I think they're about three... Th about four star Hilton hotels. Anyway, all these people that come to Ascot, they stay up there in the hotel and do they care where they park? Oh, God. No. No. Cars all over the place. They're just ghastly people. They park in the little disabled places, no badges. They just stop and get out. Who do they think they are? I think all these cars, what we need is the men from Can't Pay Will Take It Away to go around and clamp them all, boys and girls. Clamp them. That's what I say. Clamp. By the way, is my synchronisation all right this morning? Um, let us know that, please. I, I, I thought it might be a little bit out this morning. It looked like it because uh, I heard a couple of glitches on the music. I don't know if you noticed that at all, did you? Huh? Just let me know if the synchronisation is OK. If not, I'll stop and start again, but without the countdown. I've, I've found a way of doing that now without the countdown. Um, yes, so they're the people that park all over the place at Ascot. Not to mention the traffic when I get try and go to work later. 
as you well know, the last few weeks now, ever since Easter, actually, the traffic has got bad coming into London again at night. And it's often taken me two hours now to get to work. <clears throat> One of those things, I suppose, you know. What can you do? You either sit in the traffic or you don't. Got to sit in the traffic, haven't we? Never mind. Um, and all oh, talking about people who park in stupid places. My mate went mad last night. Oh, yes. He came round last night for something to eat. And um, I'm waiting for him. You know, I'm looking at the clock and it's like nine o'clock. I could hear this car. Beep, 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 beep. What the bloody hell was that? Anyway, this went on for a while. I'm looking at the clock. It's now nine. It's now ten past nine. He said nine o'clock. So the dinner was all ready for nine o'clock. Beep, 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 beep. That's all I could hear. Eventually, I went out. I thought, I wonder if that's coming around the front. And it was my mate, Ronnie. Some stupid woman, and she, this, this particular woman, keeps parking her car in stupid places. I mean, the parking down this road has got really bad in the last uh, year, 13 or 14 months now. And people have no idea how to park. They really haven't. They park on this corner. He couldn't get round. And she's come running out. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't think I'd be this long. What about everyone else who can't get through? There's no way. If I had a fire here, God rest. God, 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 not, what's the word? God, um, God forbid. If I had a fire here, there's no way a fire engine could get down through these cars. I gather, I don't know if it's true or not, they have to push their way through. Push their way through. My sister could do that, mind you. If she wanted to get between those two cars, my sister could absolutely push her way through. No problem whatsoever, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Once she was crossing a road and a large juggernaut was coming towards her and uh, she just stopped in the middle of the road and stared and it just stopped. How does she do that? How on earth does she do that? Anyway, back to this story. Uh, music fans arriving at Glastonbury Festival on Wednesday will face a sweaty walk to pitch their tents. Oh, my God, that must be awful. <clears throat> Not only have the Glastonbury people got to put up with those ghastly toilets. How could you ever want to use the toilet at an outdoor music event? In this case, at Glastonbury. Dreadful places, dear. Flies and everything. Oh, and the stench coming out of those chemical toilets must be awful. I think the best thing to do is just not to eat for a few days. Uh, you don't. You have to start that before you go away, because obviously it takes about one day or a few days, depending on your diet, for stuff to go through the body and come out the other end, isn't it? That's just how it is. So not only have they got to put up with that, but can you just imagine setting up a tent? And trying to sleep under the sun. God oh, blimey. No, thank you. Parts of southern Britain today will notch 30 degrees plus for the fifth successive day. But it will be cooler uh, further north and it's going to cool down tomorrow. I gather the difference between today and tomorrow is about eight or nine degrees. So um, if, you're, if, if it's too much for you, just wait one more day, my darlings. Get the old fan out or get one of your children. Get one of your children to stand there and fan you. That's the way to do it. Have you got a child? Yeah, just get them to do it. And if they don't do it, just don't feed them. Incidentally, I have great advice, boys and girls. I have great advice if you're going on a picnic. All right? Now, how many times have you been on a picnic, either on your own or with other people, and you are bothered by the evil wasps? How many times have they bothered you? I have an ideal way to tell you how wasps will not bother you anymore. How to get rid of those wasps. And I shall be coming to that in a few moments' time after I've read out this morning's early messages. Good morning, Gustav, who says, Morning, go on, show us your badge. Congratulations on losing so much weight. I knew if you took a double dose of your powders and went for a massive push, then you could do it. Well done. <laughs> Not taking the powders at the moment, Gustav. That's been about three weeks now. Don't need them anymore. Something has sorted itself out in my body. Isn't that interesting? I'll come to the weight loss in a minute. Morning's Evectus on the Isle of Wight. I've lost five pounds, but I found it on the floor when I looked. Was it an old one or a new one? 
What are you going to do now, Vectis? No, they changed the £5 notes. All those ones that you freshly printed, stuffed under your mattress, are no good anymore, are they? Ha ha ha! Morning to Ray Reynolds. Ray's with us this morning. Excellent. Um, Shania's at work on the Yalawa again, so we'll catch up later. Thank you, Shania. Diane is with us this morning. Good morning, Diane. Paul Dow's there. Hello, Paul. You haven't been to my karaoke lately, have you? Not coming out at the moment, lovey. Hey, always nice to see you and hear you sing your songs. And how's Robert? I haven't heard from Robert for a while. You're right, boys. <sighs> Who else is that? And Nathan Mayer Ma Mauer Jeb. Mauer Jeb. I quite like that. Mauer Jeb is with us this morning as well. Good morning, Nathan. Nice to see you, sir. OK, we've got a phone line open as well this morning. If you want to call in, it's open. 020 3477 OK, 020 3477 If you've got Skype, you can Skype in. Skype username, United Kingdom Talk. United Kingdom Talk is the Skype name and the phone number up there on the screen for you. 020 3477 So, so, how do you stop wasps bothering you at picnics? It's very, very easy. Very, very easy. First of all, you look at your little map or computer screen. You decide where you want to go. Plan the route first. Very important. You jump in your car, push bike, walk with bags to the said secluded spot somewhere, perhaps in a forest or in a park, preferably under the sun. Not good in this weather to be sitting under the sun, my loves. Is it the longest day today as well? I think it's the longest day today, isn't it? Does that mean I get to do a 10-hour show instead of a one-hour one? Shall I do a 10-hour show this morning? So you're at your spot and you unfold your blanket and you place your little basket on the blanket or carrier bags if you don't have baskets. And then you sit there and you surround yourself by your children, all 10 of them. You start eating. Sandwiches first, no problem. But then the sweet stuff comes out. The fizzy orange. The Coca-Cola. The lilt. Lilt with the tropic top, tropical taste. Seven up. Anyone tried that? Seven up. Oh, that must hurt. Lemonade. Oh, white's lemonade. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Oh, white's. Oh, white's. Or have you been tangoed? All these things are coming out. But don't open them yet. First of all, you take your pot of jam out of your bag. And then you tell the children to come around. Come over, children. Come over. And on your children's faces, you smear jam. Strawberry, raspberry, Marmalade, doesn't matter what it is. Something very, very sweet like that, you smear on your children's faces. Then you get them to sit back down in a circle around you. Now, if, you don't, if you're unfortunate and you don't have ten children, you can borrow some from neighbours. Just knock on the door. Oh, hello, we're going for a picnic today. Would you like me to take your children as well? And then you know, they would say yes. They'd be glad to get rid of them for the day. So you've got your ten children. They're in a circle. And you've now smeared their faces with strawberry jam, raspberry jam, marmalade, orange something, whatever. Lemon curd. That's a nice one. Lemon curd. I like the smell of lemon curd, don't you? My sister makes that. So you've now smeared their faces and you get them to sit back down in a circle about about six feet, six to ten feet away from you, all in a big circle. Now you get out your Coca-Cola and all that stuff and you can drink it and you can eat and the wasps will no longer bother you because they're too busy stinging the faces of the children. There you go. I told you how to stop wasps bothering you. At picnics. <laughs> oh, aren't I awful this morning? I'm dreadful. Dreadful, dreadful, dreadful. Uh, good morning to Mari. Is there? Uh, Ray Reynolds wants to know, is Rolf Harris on at Glastonbury again? I don't know. Have you checked the list? 
Have you checked the list yet, Ray? <laughs> Paul sends a little thing in. Are there certain colours you can wear to make uh, bees and wasps ignore you? Yeah, often I've heard that sometimes before. Um, I've heard that um, you shouldn't wear... Um, uh, what's it called now? Uh, uh, green, isn't it? Is it green? No, yellow. I've heard that. It says here, in terms of honeybees, thank you. Thank you, uh, Paul. In terms of honeybees, at least, I agree with several previous posters. Avoid dark colours, black, dark blue or dark red. Apparently that attracts bees. But wasps, it doesn't say anything about wasps, does it? Uh, now, there's nothing about wasps. Have you read that before you posted it to me, Paul? Where does it mention wasps? It just says bees. No mention of wasps there at all, dear. So you've just typed that in very quickly and not checked first, have you? That's how we get... Fa this is all fake news. Fake news. It's all fake news. That's what it is this morning. He has sent me an item of fake news. Boys we are girls. fighting the fake news. Fake it's news. Fake. fake. Phony. Fake. fake. Phony. Fake. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people. Enemy and of they the are. people. They are the enemy of the people. Enemy of the people. They're very dishonest people. Dishonest. Then I called the fake news, fake news the enemy of the people. Fake the news. fake news. Fake. Fake. And now fake. I'm saying, oh, no, this is no good. But you are fake news. Fake news. But I am. Fake news. Only against the fake news media or press. Fake. Fake. Paul Gallagher, you've sent me an item of fake news. Please check your facts before you send them through. Honestly, like, like watching Sky News here this morning. That ghastly woman, Kay Burley. Hello, here is the news. I have no heart and I'm as cold as ice. She looks like a porn star from the 80s, doesn't she? Don't you think? But with badly done hair. Kay Burley for, for let's we need a, 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 a protest in London to sack Kay Burley. I mean, all these little protests going up there, you know, get rid of Theresa and this, that, and the other. We don't bother with all that, dear. Sack Kay Burley, sack Kay Burley. We want someone nice on there. Bring back Angela Ripon. That's what I say. She was always nice, weren't she? Or who was the one on ITN? Selena Scott. What's she doing now? She's got a bit of time on her hands, hasn't she? <laughs> dear, dear me. Anyway, so, yesterday morning, I was up at 8 o'clock ready for the air conditioning man to come and install my brand new LG air conditioning here in the Mirable Studios. Uh, they got there at 8.30, as indeed <coughs> they said they would. Apparently, they'd been ringing the doorbell for, for a couple of minutes. I didn't hear them. I was brushing my teeth with my electric toothbrush. <laughs> the brushes don't seem to last very long on those, do they? Have you noticed that? On electric toothbrushes. Huh? Anyway, so he came in. The pair of them came in. One of them was very, very delicious. Blonde hair, probably about 28, 29. Built like a brick house, you know. Very, very tasty indeed. I did watch him going up and down his ladder. They brought all their stuff through and uh, uh, set up in the garden. They had to remove the old one first. See, I already had one in here, but it was 12 years old. It had broken down, so and it had been repaired twice, so I think it's done. I, I usually have things repaired a couple of times, and then I replace them, get a new one. So that's what was happening yesterday. Bought all their stuff. He was very, very impressed with my garden. He said, you've got a beautiful garden, mate. I spend loads of time doing the garden. Loads. I love it. I love the garden. Um, so he liked my garden. And um, they started work, really. Uh, about half past ten came. It was an all-day job. It was very, very hot yesterday, though. Half past ten came, uh, my mate came round, because I had to go to Slim's World, you see, so he came round, and I asked him to do my kitchen. Now, my mate, Ronnie, is very good at cleaning and organising things. I'm not. This office that I'm sitting in here, is it's a total mess. Look. Look. Just papers... All over. I've got. Look at all this. You see all this here? See all that there? Right. That's mainly cuttings from newspapers. Okay. Cuttings from newspapers that I have. Oh, well, there you are. Uh, I have to um, uh, possibly to use on the show. But some of these are now two weeks old, and I never never get to them. So really, at that point, you want to chuck them away again. So I'm very very messy. But he's not. He can do that, including my cupboards. 
since I s started eating different types of food rather than the um, the weight gaining items that I was eating before, it's got it's got a real mess in the covers. I can't find anything. And I've got lots of spices now, lots of spices that I like to use and stuff, which I never used before. Absolutely delicious stuff. Delicious. So he came around, and in exchange for this, I have offered to buy him two hanging baskets. Because some of his hanging baskets are dead. He's got spring ones. Now, Ronnie, unlike me, Ronnie tends to buy them ready-made. I usually make my own. It's a lot cheaper to make your own hanging baskets. He likes to buy them ready-made, so that's fair enough. So I promised him to do that. So he came, about 11 o'clock, I jumped on my cycle, on my bicycle, and I uh, cycled to Wokingham through the beautiful fields that are just down the road from me. And I arrived there just about 11.30 for our Slimming World with Linda, who was on the door greeting everyone as usual. She's really nice, Linda. She's got some stunning outfits as well. Beautiful flowery dresses. She has all her makeup and hair done nice. Because basically she's doing what I'm doing now, except in front of a group of live people. She's warm and friendly and can be funny. I have learnt, not that I did this, but someone else, unfortunately, at the meeting, put their hand up and they, they were talking to her and everything was going fine until she said, well, my sister does Weight Watchers. Well, Linda nearly fainted on the floor. She nearly fainted. I felt sorry for her. Linda fainted on the, almost fainted on the floor. The look of horror at the word Weight Watchers at a Slimming World meeting is outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. How could someone do that to her? It was like they were trying to remove her authority. It was like what the Conservatives are now trying to do to poor old Teresa. How dare you mention Weight Watchers at a Slimming World? And not only that, it's held in the Salvation Army Hall. And I felt the building shake when Weight Watchers was... I thought, I thought the Lord above was instigating an earthquake. I like that word, instigating. Anyway, so we had a, made myself a cup of tea, had a bit of a sit down and a chat with Linda. And um, everyone else comes in and you, you give your card in and all that. You hand in your food diary. Very important. You've seen these food... Actually, I might not have one left. Hang on a minute. Oh, no. No food diaries. Oh, yeah. I've got one left. Here it is. <coughs> I wonder if we get more of these or do we print them out? Weekly... F oh, no. Hang on. Where is it? No, I haven't. Oh, yes, I have. There it is. There it is. Food... No. One, two, three. No, I haven't got one. I've run out of food diaries, Linda. Oh, my God. This is terrible. I'll have to get some more next week. But that's okay. You know, I generally know what I'm doing. Handed in the food diaries. And then we go on the Slimming World Weighing Scales. It was a queue of about five people, but we moved fairly quickly. And it's nice there. I've met new people and, and talked to them. And it's just a nice morning going to these things. She does four at the Sally Army in Wokingham. Uh, 9.30, 11.30, 5.30 and 7.30 they are. And I think she does all of them. It's like an all-day job to her, I suppose. They have all the displays set out and all that. Then I went on way on the scales. And I was hoping... I, I set myself a target last week of £3. I was hoping to get £2. And I'll tell you why. Uh, some of the meals I've been having have been very large. I always underestimate the rice. You put the rice in, you know how it is. And rice must be done only in water, not oil. Don't put any oil in anything at all, because that's where I think all the weight's coming from. Good morning, Craig. Morning, Tony Power. Good morning, Mark Cording. Everyone's here. Look, everyone's joining us. Mark Weller, my friend from school as well, is even there. Mari likes the picture behind me. Thank you, Mari. I've got a few different pictures that I like to rotate there, my darling. I rotate them. Um, and it's it's just nice being able to talk to people and you sit next to someone and they tell you how they've done and all that business. Anyway, so I got on the scales. Uh, some of the portions have been very big because I keep underestimating the rice. I don't like to throw food away, though. So even if there's too much, I'll eat it. And there's been three occasions last week where I've been absolutely stuffed. Absolutely stuffed. But the food I eat, it's all 
mainly sin-free. I've told you about the sins before. Okay, so, uh, for example, um, rice, vegetable rice risotto. Rice done in water, remember? Everything's done in water. Zero sins. You're allowed 25 a day as a man, 15 a day as a, fee as a lady. No sins in it. So I've been stuffing this up and I thought, well, there must be a point where you're eating too many free foods. Not according to those scales yesterday. I lost three and a half pounds. That's half a pound a day. That's, you know, what's the, what's the thing of butter? That's half a pound, isn't it? A butter thing. Or is it a pound? I don't know. Anyway, so that means I get my half a stone sticker. Yes, look. Look at that. Shining and gleaming away for all to see. Oh, wow. Which Linda gave me. How marvellous is this? My half a, well, half a stone sticker. And uh, in the back, <clears throat> let me just check. There it is. Look, look. Here, here's my thing so far. Don't know. Is that a bit blurry? Look at that. There we are. It tells you what you, what you start at and all that business. Is that it's trying to focus? Is it? Is that going to focus? It might not focus. That's where I started and that's where I am now. Minus three and a half pounds. Can you see that? Thank you very much. Not only that, but a half stone awesome achievement certificate. I think this should be displayed, really. Perhaps up there. I could have them all going along like that, couldn't I? Shall I do that now? Shall I do that now? Or maybe it'll just, will that just slot under there for now? Maybe it won't. No, it won't, will it? No, it won't. I'll, I'll have to put it up with something. I don't want to put it up with a staple gun because it puts holes in the um, in the material behind, doesn't it? So there we are. Thank you very much. So the meeting went on. Everyone's been talked about. One lady who wasn't there lost nine pounds. Remember the lady I told you was eleven pound last week. This week she's lost another nine pounds. Yes, uh, the lady in question um, uh, is uh, quite big. Uh, and the bigger you are, the easier it is to lose a lot of weight at the beginning. So the smaller you are, the thinner you are. Yeah, obviously not Naomi Campbell or someone like that. Or that Cheryl... No, not... Who's, who's the really skinny um, uh, singer? Is it Cheryl Cole? No, Victoria... Be I, <laughs> I say singer. That was a bit of a joke. Victoria Beckham. I mean, she looks so miserable, doesn't she? How could you want to look that thin like a stick insect? Please. I was walking past her the other day and I thought she was a stick insect. I was about to hoover her up. We don't have insects in the house. I can't bear insects. Spiders, flies, anything like that. Fuzzing around and upsetting my pussy. She don't like insects flying around her. So, everyone's going around. <clears throat> and then it came to the Slimming World raffle. Oh, Yes. Which I didn't win, unfortunately. I didn't win the Slimming World raffle this week, but I did last week, so I can't complain. So I thought, oh, well, maybe next week. But then came the Slimming World Slimmer of the Week Award. Da, 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 da. That was won by the lady, uh, which is a certificate and a little basket of goodies. And we all bring something in for that. So I took in some penny, pe penny? Pen, penini, penny, you know that pasta, little round pasta things like tubes. I took those in, and there was a little basket there of various bits and pieces. Now, the lady who won the slimmer of the week was, of course, the lady who won uh, lost nine pounds this week. But unfortunately, she wasn't there, which means it goes to the second one down, which was a lady who lost five pounds. Guess what? She wasn't there. So it then goes to the next one down. Guess who that was? Da, 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 da. Me. Me, 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 me. I'm so happy. And I won the Slimmers of the Week basket of food, but not the certificate. Because obviously there's stuff in there, perishables. And if the lady's gone home, then, you know, what can you do? And there was, what did I have in there? Uh, I had my own stuff that I bought last week. Some tomato type things. It was a banana. Uh, some apricots. And one lady had bought in, and this is probably the best item in there, her very own homegrown spring onions. Oh, yes. And they, she 
pulls them up with the so they come with the green bits, the leaves on top, and all that. So that was wonderful. The lady who sits in front of me, she does the raffle. I think it was hers. So she brought that in, and I had some of that. Very, very nice indeed. Very nice. So I packed up a little bag, and off I went again. Um, uh, cycling home for the fields, happy with my sticker, my prizes, and all that. Uh, very, very hot cycling back, I have to say. And I could actually feel the sun on my poor balding head here. I do I do have a hat, um, like one of those, what are they called, baseball caps. But I put a hat on and my head gets really hot and sticky under those. It's horrible. Is there a hat that you can buy that doesn't make your hat, your head hot and sticky? <laughs> Got back here. Um... As I came round the, the back of my house, uh, the blokes who were doing the air conditioning were actually sitting in the car. I said, all right, he said, we're just having 10 minutes and trying to cool down in here a bit. You just imagine they're up a ladder at the side of my house. The sun is now beating down on them, beating, beating. It's now about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Very, very hot indeed. Really very hot indeed. Um, uh, got back in. The kitchen was done. My mate had cleaned and tidied up the kitchen. It looked fantastic. Uh, but we've got all these little boxes of spice, uh, spices that I told you about that I've been purchasing from Waitrose um, over the last uh, uh, couple of weeks now to, to go with all my home cooking. And they're all over the place. Oh, I can't find any. So many of them. So I've now ordered a spice rack from Amazon. £32. Nice wooden thing it is. So that's going to be uh, uh, for the spices. Ordered that. Now let me add. I then, uh, then I did lunch and we had uh, eggs. With fry light, fry light, but never use oil in anything. All the oil, gone. Thrown it out. All oil has been discarded from this property. So two eggs each in fry light, so four eggs altogether. Um, I had, uh, we had baked beans and we had uh, fried onion, again in fried light, fry light. I do like fried onions, don't you? Do you ever go to a, um, a, uh, a cinema or, or a fun fair? And that smell, oh, those hot dogs smell lovely. No, it's not, the, it's not the sausages. It's the onions, mate. You could just happily have an onion roll. Or, if you go to Slimmer's World, just the onions. Can I have a little punnet, punnet of fried onions, please? Oh, <coughs> although you wouldn't have it there because it'd be done in oil. Oh, my God. You know, you'd, you'd try and pick these onions up from the punnet at the fun fair, and they would be sliding off the fork, I'm telling you. Not good. Not good at all. So we had that. Um, watched a bit of television. I watered my hanging baskets for the second time. Very, very important to water your hanging baskets at the moment, boys and girls. Uh, the blokes finished doing my air conditioning about four o'clock. And they were, they were such nice chaps. They really were. Now and again, they'd stop and have a little bit of a chat. Uh, they popped into the van a couple of times to cool down. They really were very hot. Uh, I'm not surprised. I was hot sitting in the living room trying to watch the television. I can't remember we were watching the news. I have the news on an awful lot. Uh, they were telling me that yesterday's job, they were in a loft. They were working in someone's loft. And you, I don't know if you've ever been up in your loft when it's a hot day. My God, it's hot. It is so hot in there. And of course, you go up in the winter and it's freezing cold as well. Not nice. And they reckon it was about, it must have been 45, 50 degrees in that loft that they were working in yesterday. That's no, well, well, Monday, that is now, it's because it's Wednesday now. So I did that. Uh, they finished about four o'clock. Uh, then I popped to gardens. I was going to put, and of course, as soon as I go, oh, we're going to the garden centre now to get my hanging basket. I said, well, well, can't you wait a couple of days? Oh, well, I want it to look all nice. I thought, I wish, I wish I'd never said anything. But you can't complain, the kitchen's done. Kitchen's done. I thought, no, get me his hanging baskets. And I've said before, I don't know about you. Um, he. Uh, sorry, not he. Uh, whenever I go to garden centre, you go there for one item, you come back with a bas basket full of stuff. Or a trolley full of stuff, more like. So I went there. He chose the two hanging baskets. I said, I'm just going to see if there's any rhododendrons left. And I bought two rhododendrons, two of something else, and two of something else. Thank you, £81. <laughs> that garden centre is deadly, I'm telling you, for your wallet. Absolutely deadly. So we got those, uh, got his two baskets, uh, popped into Sainsbury's to get some roast onion gravy because I've got something else to cook today. Well, I had a load of carrots in the um, in the cupboard. 
which have been there for about a week. I thought, I'm going to lose those soon. And I wanted to do the item on Monday. I, I saw the carrots in there. I'll do this item on Monday. I had no roast onion gravy, of course. So Monday night, I couldn't do it. So on the way back, got the roast onion gravy, and I'm just about to put it on. And then I looked at the carrots, and I thought, oh, no, there were two, a couple of them that were off. You know, they go all mushy carrots, so I had to chuck the whole lot out again. So I couldn't do that. Um, cleared up after the cat. She made a nice mess in the kitchen. Thank you, Katie. She's not liking this hot weather at all. She lays on the floor like that. <laughs> Honestly, she's just laying in the kitchen floor like that. Often weeing herself. She, she sits at her own... Um, unfortunately, just the way it is. And it's intercom. She's a very old cat now. Had a couple of hours sleep. Got up. Uh, and uh, once again, for the third week running, I made my homemade arabata sauce. Very nice. Thank you very much. I have a recipe that I'll put up on my wall at some point, if you like. Oh, actually, I might be able to do it now. Let's have a look. Shall I put it in the comment section? Do you want to see this recipe? Um, is that, That's the recipe. There's the recipe for the uh, arabata sauce in the comment section there, boys and girls. I'll read out your comments in a second. So I made that. Uh, Ronnie doesn't like anything spicy with chilies or anything like that. So I'd done him... Uh, in a, in a saucepan, chopped up tomatoes, chopped up onions and garlic. Now, I'm, I'm no longer buying fresh garlic. What I do now is I buy frozen garlic. Oh, it's so easy. Open the packet, pour it in. It's done. And there's nothing added to it. It is only frozen garlic. I'm sure they don't add anything to it. So it's just as good a quality. And that's what we add here with spaghetti and then some strawberries and... Um, and uh, he doesn't like the, 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 the fat-free yoghurt I've got. So I just had fat-free yoghurt myself. And that was very nice. And that was our day yesterday. And as I say, I was going to come up and do a, a show yesterday. Um, but I, I did have a headache last night. Uh, so we watched uh, Holby City. And one of my favourite nurses has died. I was shocked and horrified. Jack's sister has died on Holby. What happened, she had a scalpel in her pocket, right? She didn't get stabbed by anyone. Uh, someone pushed her over and the scalpel went into her side. But it didn't look like that bad. It was only a small scalpel. I have to say, I thought the injury on the telly <coughs> was a lot worse than it, than it should have been. But maybe not. Anyway, she's dead. Very disappointing. I liked her. Very pretty girl. That was my day yesterday. Let's read some of your messages out, gang. Uh, good morning to Ray Belasco. Good morning, Ray. Morning to Anthony uh, Lerner, who's in Latvia. I'm very popular in Latvia. Did you know that? They've got statues of me and they've got shrines and everything over there, you know. It's true. Morning, Peter Hydes. Did you like the video? Yes. Do you, did you not see the little smiling faces I put underneath it, Peter? Have a look back, dear. Uh, Tony says, more meat on the butcher's fork than Beckham women, Chris. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why doesn't she ever smile? You see, I don't think you should be that thin. That's not normal. It really isn't. And it makes you look miserable like she is. <laughs> Ray says, you sound like Steve Allen. He called David Davy Boy. <laughs> Who's Davy Boy? David who? Davy Boy or Cameron? Oh, Davy Boy Beckham. That's what you mean, isn't it? <laughs> And good morning to Maria, who joins us this morning as well. Uh, there is a phone line open. If you want to call in, 020 3477 is my phone number, OK? 020 3477 phone number. Or you can uh, Skype in. My Skype username is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. That's the Skype username. Uh, Ashley who often pops into the programme. I don't know if he's with us today, uh, but he's just come back from Butlins. Do you remember Ashley who called in? No, he didn't call in. He, he messaged in, I think, on Friday's show, and he said he was going to Butlins for an 80s weekend. Well, he's been on it, and I saw him Monday night uh, while I was at Central Station, and uh, he said it was we had a really good time there, so I'm pleased about that. They, had, they have a few 80s bands now. Did he tell me who was on there? I can't remember who told me was on there now, but they had a good... And it's a good weekend, these 80s weekenders. Butlins. I think Pontins. Do Pontins do them as well? I've never been on one of those myself. I'd probably like to go to a soul weekender, where it's all soul music, you know, like uh, Ashford and Simpson, um, Patty Boulay, 
uh, Rufus and Chaka Khan, that sort of music. Loose ends. I like all that stuff. Michael, what's that one? Break the Ice. Michael, oh, Break the Ice. Break the Ice. Do you know that song? You probably know. It's a bit specialist. But I used to be an 80s DJ in the, um, uh, a soul DJ in the 19, early 80s. I used to listen to Tony Blackburn on BBC Radio London. He had an excellent show on there. Really, really good. But these 80s weekenders, soul weekenders, uh, that Butlins do very well, I believe. I'd like to go on one at some point. I really would. I mean, Pontins, of course. Uh, we used to go to Pontins for our holidays. We had a wonderful time. They were fantastic holidays. The food was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. What would happen in the morning, this music would be ploughed over loudspeakers, indicating it was time to get up, sort of, I don't know. About eight o'clock in the morning, so you'd all get up and all make your way to the um to the dining room, which was a, a massive, massive room, okay. And you all had your table numbers and and, and all that. And you, generally, you'd sit with another family, so there'd be eight of you on the table, four and four, you know, or, or, or something to make up those numbers. And the and it would all table service. Waiters and waitresses would come round and give out your food, and you'd be bought these stainless steel. Um, receptacles of food and all sorts of things in there, eggs, baked beans, whatever. So you'd have your breakfast and then sort of halfway through the breakfast, one of the Pontins blue coats would stand on a chair somewhere with a microphone and it would say, you know, good morning campers. It was all, it, you know that programme, Heidi High? Well, it was just like that. That is exactly how it was at Pontins in the 1970s. It was a fantastic holiday. <clears throat> Absolutely fantastic. So the bloke would stand up there and read out what had happened perhaps the night before. The, um, the, holiday, the holiday makers would be split up into two teams. You'd have Embassy and Costello, I suppose sponsored by cigarette people at that time. And your team was trying to beat the other team at everything. And you'd have these points that would accumulate during the week. And it would come on the thing and say, yep, and last night, Embassy scored 35. The person winning the Donkey Derby was in the house of Embassy. And everyone go, hooray, like that. Wow. And then he would tell you about the events that were happening today. Swimming pool competition, fancy dress... Fan hat, that sort of thing. And you could, if you wanted to, join in any of these activities. They were all included in the holiday. <clears throat> there was a TV room. There were no TVs in every chalet. There was a TV room. Um, and then you'd have your day's activities. You could, as I say, stay there or go outside the camp and uh, go to the seaside or have a look round somewhere. And then the lunch, well, that would be at the one, about tw one o'clock in the afternoon, I think. Again, you'd all go into the dining hall, have your lunch. I, I, honestly, I cannot remember a single meal that we refused. It was fantastic food in there, in Pontins. Absolutely fantastic. I'd do some more stuff and then go back again at night time for your nighttime meal. And then from there, you'd go to the ballroom. Everyone would go to the ballroom. There weren't several different rooms doing different things. There was one ballroom. And you'd go in there and usually it would start off with something like bingo. Uh, followed by something for the children. At nine o'clock, it might have been eight o'clock, eight or nine o'clock, they would sing Good Night Children. I know, I remember the song well. Good night, children. See you in the morning. Good night, children. I can see you yawning. I can't remember the rest of the words. Right? Da 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 da. Uncle Fred said, because it was Fred Pontin. Uncle Fred said, it's time that you were in bed. So I'll say good night, children. See you in the morning. And went on like that. And, 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 good night. And then most of the children would then uh, go to their chalets and go to bed. And they would be left there on their own. 
Because these terrible things that happen these days, they didn't seem to happen back in the 70s. I don't know why, but they didn't. You never heard of anything happening anyway. And uh, I think a few members of staff would go around literally walking outside the chalets. And if they heard anything, they would come back into the hall and there would be a big blackboard on the side of the stage, baby crying in chalet 172 or something like that. Baby crying in chalet 43. There'd be a board up there and then you'd go to your chalet and see what the problem was with your baby. You'd just leave them there on their own. You wouldn't do that now, would you? But that's how it was then, it, and it worked. So the entertainment would continue. You wouldn't have a DJ. No, there would be a band. Every night there'd be a covers band playing covers. Excellent, excellent bands. Um, there'd be some sort of cabaret, maybe a magician, uh, I don't know, a juggler, a, a, a singer, something like that. Then you'd have a bit more of the band, and then at 12 o'clock it was all finished. You used to wander back to your chalice quietly, quietly. You wouldn't make lots of noise. You'd be respectful of other people. Not like today, like that caravan site I was on a few weeks ago. Ghastly people. Coming through the caravans in the middle of the night, you know, shouting and screaming. Couples having rows in the street. Awful people. Ghastly, awful people disrespectful with everyone else that is trying to sleep around them. We didn't do that then. It was so quiet. Everyone, you know, you'd be, you'd be talking quietly so as not to wake up the people in the other chalets. And you go to bed. That was it. The chalets, well, they were very basic, but warm, comfortable. It was always like a smell in there. Not an unpleasant smell. I, I can't describe the smell, but you had the bathroom. There were no cooking facilities. You had the bathroom and the bedroom. I don't think did we have tea I don't think we had tea facilities either. I can't remember now. That was all done in the um in the um in the main dining area, you see. We just got a phone call here. Tony's on the line. Good morning, Tony. Hello, Chris. I just thought I'd give you give you a uh, well, is it early morning or late morning? Oh, it's it's still early morning. Mid it? mid morning, mid morning. Did you go to Pondins, Tony, or Butlins? Uh, uh, no, I've only ever once been to Butlins, but it was it turned out to be a very tragic time actually. It was a what? Because Sorry, it, it, it turned out to be nine eleven. Oh really? Oh yeah, I went oh. to Butlins in Brighton uh, with uh, with uh, on a work zoo. Do you mean, mean Bogner? Uh, no, it was in Brighton, uh, and, and of course it doesn't exist anymore. They've knocked oh, it down now and, and okay. turned it into, yeah. into flats. So a lot they're... of them have all gone now, Tony, the Pontins and the Butlins. I remember there used to be a big catalogue, and there must have been 20 or so different places. Now there's about six of them. It's a, it's a shame. But that's... I don't even Yeah, I, I, I'm really surprised there's any left, actually. I, right. I think there was one in Bognor or something, I believe. But, yes, there but, is uh, still one there, yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I, uh, uh, the only experience I've ever had of anything like that was was actually the uh, during the nine eleven weekend or, or right. your period when that was all happening. In fact, we were coming back back to uh, we were just about to leave the hotel that morning when everything was kicking off. You know, when the you know, the twin towers were yes were uh, uh, ablaze and 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 all that stuff was going on in in, uh, in America. So uh, it was quite a, quite a somber. And 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 to the break really, you right. know. So, uh, but uh, yeah, that was the experience I've had. From, yeah, I'm from, sure it was. I'm sure it Pardon? was. What what was your was it a special weekend there or what? It was. It was what we were doing is at the time I was um, I was working with mental health services and we took some of our service users down to you know down to Brighton for a few days. You know, just to give them a bit of a break. Yeah. And uh, and we and we booked. Uh, uh, your know, Butlins in Brighton, above, above all places, and it... um, and we had, we had a few days there, you know. So you know, they all seemed to enjoy it, and and uh, and the entertainment was very good. And it, it, you know, I, it was... we always, I don't think uh, I, I can find a single thing to complain about when we used to go to Pontins in the seventies. It was a wonderful time, and that business with leaving your children in the chalets. I, I say you, it was very safe. And uh, Maria, who's watching the show this morning, says it's so true. In those days, it was safe for our children, and it was. You you could just yeah. leave your children in the chalet, lock the door. And, um, and, and members of staff would walk around all the chalets 
right up to 12 o'clock when the when really the whole place used to close down at 12 it was finished at 12 mm. i used to go back to your cellars and go back to bed <laughs> mm. oh happy times tony happy, happy times. times indeed yeah, yeah i've had a fairly busy weekend uh, week so far myself i've been in the, in the studio most of the week you're making some music yeah so i'm working with a guy you might have remember him actually from the from the eurovision days um uh, Ray Caruana. The name rings a bell. No, he was in a group called Live Report. He's going to be doing one of my, my songs, uh, you know, for later on in the year. So. Okay. Uh, and uh, he, was in, uh, he finished second for the UK in the Eurovision Song Contest. Wow. Oh, that's and, excellent. And uh, he's, he's a great guy, a lovely, brilliant singer. And um, so he's going to be doing one of my tracks later on. So, Good. So, Anyone else you're working with at the moment? Um, yeah, there's a few. There's, there's, there's a few out. There's a, a few people that I'm, that's going to be on my new album, uh, like uh, Evelyn Thomas and people like that from, oh, from yeah. the old days. Yeah. And, uh, what and, about our lady and, from uh, the Three Degrees? And Nikki, yeah, Nikki French will be on there, and there'll be um, who else have I got? The three, uh, of course, I've, I've got to put the Three Degrees on there. Right. And uh, you know, there's a few others. There's, there's uh, Angie Gold. Do you remember Angie? Yes, Angie Gold. I'm. Uh, Angie Gold, um, I wish... No, wrong one. Uh, no, I'm going to be doing... Um, Who did the song I wish I did Angie didn't... Brown. Remember Angie? Yeah, I'm going to Angie get you, Brown. baby, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so she's got to be on there as well. So, so it's going to be a very interesting little album. So, and it'll be coming out later on in the year. So, so, so we're working on that. And, and I'm doing a Christmas song as well. So. Excellent. I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to hook up with you at some point and get some of these people to do our new car karaoke that I'm trying to get going. Yeah, it could yes, be I did a car karaoke um, the other day. We tried it out with my best mate Ron, and it worked very well. So it's just yeah. it's just getting together with people and and finding the time to do these. But it, it works. It kind yeah. of works technically. It works anyway. <laughs> Sounds fascinating. Isn't it? I hear you talking about the Beckham woman earlier on. Oh no, thank you, dear. I don't want her on it, love. <laughs> I want happy people on there, dear. <laughs> happy people, happy. You're a happy probably, person, aren't you? Probably you wouldn't have the energy to get up the stairs to get in there, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> dear, poor old soul. I wish someone would go and buy her a bag of crisps or something, dear. <laughs> it sounds... It's, it's just like a skeleton, for goodness sake. Yeah, I mean, well, that's that's how she wants to look, though, isn't it? I mean, how can... Uh, you know, I, I think, actually, these days, they're trying to encourage, you know, bigger women to take part in well, that, these... Uh, I, think that, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think it's ridiculous. In these, uh, what do you call them? Um, well, you've got these uh, little girls, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine years old, that stop eating because yeah. they, they think that's the right thing to do. It's ridiculous. Well, yes, absolutely. And, ridiculous. And, and, yes, and it does encourage mental illness. Actually. Well, yeah. And, you know, these, um, uh, these um, dress designers and all that business, I mean, it's their fault. It's their fault. Oh, yeah. They're yeah, good at the, making these tiny little dresses that just about go over a pen. Yes, <laughs> and we're just trying to teach people. Or uh, uh, you're talking to people at a very young age like that, and you know, you're encouraging them. Uh, yes, you to, are. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, you, are, you are to be like that as adults as well. Yeah. Do you know what? You know, jo uh, John's just sent in a message here. Please have some singing lessons. What a cheek! What a cheek! I think I'm a very good singer, don't you, Tony? I think I should be on one of your tracks. Oh, oh, you know, John, you know, John is absolutely brilliant. He's, he's, he's a, he's a you know, you know, John is quite lovely for you. John, uh, you know, John Springy. No, John Aitken. He's just oh, sent John... us a message at the moment this morning. He's telling me to have singing lessons. And I said to you, I think I've got a wonderful voice. I think I should be on one of your tracks, Tony. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> well, what? yes, I think you're a very good What singer. are you laughing at? Has something funny happened? No, it's just... <laughs> I think you've got a very good voice. You've got a lovely, you've oh. got a lovely voice. Oh, oh, no, hang on, it's Ronnie. OK, he says Ronnie should have some singing lessons. Yeah, I'll well, go along with you there, John, I agree. <laughs> no, Aren't okay. we awful I, I this you've morning? Got a great voice, uh, you, you know, you just don't sing enough, that's all. Oh, know? well, you know, I, when I'm doing my karaoke, I like to put the people first, as you well know. It's about time well, yeah, you turned up at one that's, of them. That's, 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 that's always a polite way to... You know, to do it, isn't it? Yes, it absolutely is, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, anyway, there you go. So yes, I love... warm today, my goodness. Once I get this karaoke thing going, I think what I'll have to do, because I have two nights off a week now, and I could use one of those to meet up with a couple of people. I could probably do two a night and meet up with a couple of people and do this. And um, when you've got your stars with you, then perhaps um, 
They could take well, them. I, you see, the problem with the stars I've got is I hardly ever see them because we... Oh, uh, you said... <laughs> Uh, uh, we, you know, uh, um, uh, a lot of the recordings actually come from around the world, from where they actually live. I'm and, with you, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's easy and, to do that. And, uh, and they're emailed over to us, and we put vocals to two tracks and things like that. That's right. the way we work. But uh, we, uh, we do occasionally see them. I, I suppose the best experience I've had with, 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 with actually working with the artist live was with the Three Degrees. Oh, you know, uh, wow, yeah. It's when, when I actually work with them in the studio on, 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 on my track, Holding Back, and and that was a wonderful experience because right. they just waltzed into the studio. The microphones all set up, stood by the stood by the microphones, and none of this nonsense of of, of tuning up vocals and oh. all that. Oh, oh, you're standing. It's, you're starting to sound like some of my. Ca- no, actually, there's not many of them at all. There's probably about three. Um, none of who I've seen in recent weeks. Actually, they come on. Oh, oh, I can't hear the echo. Oh. Oh, can you turn this up? Oh, can you turn... Just get on with the bloody song and stop moaning. Moan, yeah, moan, it, moan, exactly. moan, 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 moan. You see, that's why the three degrees are still going these days. They, yeah. PR, PR, people <laughs> like to hear them. They're very genuine, down-to-earth people. What you see is what you get. and, and, and they're, they're, you know, it's, just, it's just lovely to hear them singing still, you know. Did you watch Sheila on that recent uh, TV programme about the pensioners that tr- see what it's like to go and retire abroad. She was on that, wasn't she? Who was there? Which, which one was Sheila Ferguson? Yes, I think it was Sheila, yes. I, I don't know if, he, if I've seen that. Actually. Yeah, I mean, it was I excellent. Uh, where would they go? India. They went to India. Oh, I think I missed out on that. I must, oh, I must, yes. Uh, check there it was, out. There was her, uh, Wayne Sleep. Um, oh, yeah. The, la- the, the little lady, the little, the little lady from Harry Potter... What's her name? Oh, so she's very oh. short. Uh, not sure who that. And is. she she kept saying she she likes to fart a lot for some reason. I don't <laughs> know what. It was her, a lady that was in Coronation. It was an excellent series, excellent. Oh. And what basically they they come away and they go and live abroad and see what it would be like to retire to this country. And oh, oh and um, yeah. oh, and who's who's, heard, who's the uh, tall? The, Who's the tall series, isn't it? A new series of of, of programs like that. I, I can't remember what it's called. Now. Who's the tall bloke who used to do a lot of dancing and he was on? Uh, is it a film? A film, a book, or a show? Who was that bloke? Tall bloke. Was he Brit- uh, British? Was he? Yes. Tall, um, curly hair. And uh, he's tall, and he used to do Oh God, yeah. Was he? Was he in a um, a show band before, or, or a boy band, or something? Oh, I can't remember his name now. Oh, I don't know. I'm not too sure about that. Maybe somebody on on on. He, he was on television on. a lot in the in the seventies and eighties. He oh. does dancing very very. Is and he's a lovey. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, you, oh, you don't mean Lionel Blair. Lionel Blair. <laughs> thank you, Samantha. Lionel Blair. That's the one. Lionel Blair. He was on it as well, and it was really good. Really good and interesting. And interestingly, all these people got on together. They didn't row or anything. Oh, and there was a bloke who plays darts as well. Uh, uh, not Eric Bristow. Eric Bristow. Um, no. Oh, who else was Someone on else. Days? Anyway, they yeah. were all on it, and it was great. It was really, really good, and they were on that. Sheila was on that. Oh, it's, you know, that sounds fair. You know, I, I think I might <laughs> check it up. It might still be... Uh... You might still be able to get a, you know, get a hold of it, hold of it on, online, perhaps. Yeah. Now, what side like was that. it on? Was it was a BBC program? So you might try iPlayer. It was called the Real Marigold. All oh, right. Real yeah. Marigold Hotel or something like that. It was excellent series. Yeah. All right. Oh, well. Okay, Tony. Well, there? thank you very much, sir. I can't hear you very well. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go now. Okay. Yeah. And, Thank and, you. Uh, great chatting as ever, and uh, I'm about to get back to the grind. It, you know, it's so warm today, isn't it? Oh, Lovely. I know. Let me know when you've done the songs. We'll have a little listen. Oh, there's, uh, I'm, I'm doing quite a, quite a bit at the moment with new stuff, you know. Fantastic. So, so it, it'll all be coming out later on in the year. Be, I've, I've got an, I've an album and at least one album and, uh, and a single as well. Well, so. if you can't get any of the singers to do it, you're going to have to do it yourself, mate. I'm bloody well not singing. I used to love singing one time, but I just gave it up. For some reason, I just Go lost on, get out with you. <laughs> I just lost enthusiasm for singing. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, Never mind. I used, to, I used to love it. 
Get I'm out. One of the original Keep cool. Karaoke singers, I think. I oh, know. I'm going. Bye-bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Cheerio, Tony. <laughs> bye. bye now. There's our Tony, music man extraordinaire, calling in there, boys and girls. Uh, for a chat about his music and what have you. Uh, John Aiken says, Miriam, thank you. Miriam Margoyles was hilarious. Miriam, that's her. What a lovely, warm lady she is, isn't she, Miriam? Uh, Paul Nicholas as well. Samantha, thank you very much. Paul Nicholas and Just Good Friend, Just Good Friends. He was in it. Um, I don't think it was Matthew Kelly, Peter. Sure it wasn't Matthew Kelly. John says, have you had your air conditioning fixed? Yes. It's up there working away. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, though, what those boys did yesterday. And so clean. No mess or anything. Isn't that wonderful? Gustav says, Chris Darling, you don't need singing lessons. The crackling and breaking of your amateur voice lets people feel more comfortable singing at karaoke. <laughs> Morning, AD. Dennis Taylor, that was him. So it wasn't a darts player, was it? It was a snooker player. Dennis Taylor, thank you very much. I remember him as well. All righty, uh, we're due today's birthdays, and then we're going to disappear, boys and girls. Uh, all right, because um, I didn't realise I've been chatting for so long today. One second. Let's just get these birthdays. I'll have to do yesterday's birthdays as well this morning. And it's Ray Belasco's birthday today. Ray is a very, very dear friend of mine. He was a, a regular customer at the Black Cat, often come and danced on the stage, and now and again he turns up at the karaoke as well at the Central Station. So happy birthday today to Ray, who's 50 years old today. It's not bad, is it, Ray? 50 today. Happy birthday, my very good friend, Ray. Uh, Tony Lowe, happy birthday to Tony. Likes a bit of singing. Stuart Deacon, happy birthday, Stuart. David Bloomfield, good morning, David. Happy birthday to you. And Luke Reed, 38 today. Luke, I worked with uh, uh, a few times, actually, and uh, I hope you're doing well. All right, uh, Luke. Happy birthday, Luke. 38 years old today. Uh, yesterday's birthdays. Just coming up, because we weren't with you yesterday. I know it was Ricky's birthday yesterday. Let's uh, just get my paper out, and I've got a couple to do here that people sent in a note. Now, where's my bit of paper? There it is. There it is. Let's have a look. <coughs> Joe Cooper. A uh, Joe! The lovely Joe. Happy birthday to Joe Cooper for yesterday. I miss you, darling, from Belushi's. Little Ricky. Ricky F. Grave. Ricky F. Grave. Happy birthday for yesterday, sir. He's a lovely young man. He comes into Central Station. He uh, uh, goes, his other half is a guy who does a lot with, the, both of them do a lot of uh, labour um, uh, work. Uh, activism? Act activists? They're both Labour activists. So happy birthday to you, Ricky, uh, for yesterday, all right? Uh, happy birthday to Millie. Motorised Millie. It was Motorised Millie's birthday yesterday. Sorry I couldn't be with you yesterday, uh, Millie. The people were doing the air conditioning in the office and I didn't do a nighttime show. So happy birthday for yesterday, Millie. Um, Mike Yule. Mike Yule. Wow, is it your birthday yesterday? Don't say your age there, Mike. Mike is very important to me. I can't tell you why, but he is. Mike is possibly, or probably, one of the most important people in my life. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mike, for yesterday. Alan Greedhar. Alan Greed... Harry? Harry? I think it's your birthday. It was your birthday. Have I got the name right? Alan Greed Harry. I think that's right. Uh, Tina Russell, happy birthday for yesterday. Nuno, Nuno R.F. Oliveira. What a wonderful name. Happy birthday. Kerry Keza Wolford, happy birthday to you. And Jimmy D, DJ extraordinaire. It was his birthday yesterday as well. So let's sing the song. Here we go. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Hope you all enjoy your birthdays. And one more that was sent in to me by a lovely lady called Lily. And uh, she comes to the karaoke quite often. It was her daughter's birthday yesterday. Uh, Angel, who was 16. So 16's a bit special. So you get a little birthday message all on your own. All right, Angel. Happy birthday for yesterday. Angel, 16 years old today. Daughter of Lily, and I hope you had um, uh, a wonderful time. All right, uh, last messages. Paul. No, we're done, aren't we? 
We're done this morning. That's it for the show today. Thank you very, very much for joining me, boys and girls. Uh, as I say, a very, very, very hot day today. I'm very fortunate that I've had this um, air conditioning put in. Here. I've got the one in the bedroom as well. Uh, just don't stay in the sun too long or you'll get sunstroke. I've had it before. Only a couple of months ago, actually, when I was at my uh, sister's house, I unfortunately stayed out in the sun a bit too long. I don't lay in the sun. I find laying in the sun incredibly boring. I don't know how people can do that, like lay on a beach or, uh, you know, on a seat in their garden with the sun beating full down on them. That just, I, it's just not me at all. I like to be doing things. But just because you're moving around doesn't mean you're not going to get sunstroke. You just get it just as much sort of walking through the shops or something like that if the sun's on you. So do be very, very careful with that. Uh, tonight, it is Wednesday night. <coughs> so the weather doesn't stop us, boys and girls. It's quiz night tonight at the King's Head Theatre Bar. And I'm going to give you a clue. Going to give you a clue here. The King's Head Theatre Bites every Wednesday, 8.30 to 10.30. OK, get there at 8 o'clock if you want a table. Last week, very busy. We had 11 teams last week. All right, so if you want to come, try and get there for around about um, 8 o'clock. Starts at 8.30. And tonight's music round is musicals. If you know musicals, then you will want to come tonight. I might play you a little, little bit from something like... Um, I know, Cinderella or Beauty and the Beast or something like that. It's musicals tonight uh, for the music round at the King's Head Theatre Bar Quiz. Join us from 8.30. Have a lovely day and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Cheerio now.